cette idée de, de plan de réalité, cette idée d'un personnage qui, comme dans un rêve, c'est-à-dire le personnage est en vrai et derrière le monde est comme une toile de rêve. Vertigo, c'est un de vos films les plus poétiques. Il est plus poétique que dramatique, même. Mais le film, a, dans le côté rêve, il a une espèce de lenteur, quelque chose de contemplatif que n'ont pas vos autres films. Ils sont souvent construits sur la fulgurance, la rapidité. Qu'est-ce qui intéressait le plus, M. Hitchcock, dans le, dans le sujet ce qui m'intriguait, c'était les efforts de créer euh, une femme à partir de l'image d'une femme morte. Welcome to Kermit Uncut. There's a new film out this week called Hitchcock Truffaut. It's a documentary, and it's about the meeting between Truffaut and Hitchcock in the early 1960s. Truffaut was a huge Hitchcock fan. He conducted a series of interviews with Hitchcock around about 1962, and these were eventually turned into a book, which became a kind of pretty much a famous textbook, a kind of a Bible for filmmakers about Hitchcock's style, particularly his visual style. And it was something that was used by many filmmakers to kind of educate themselves. The documentary goes back to some of the original sound tapes and it has photographs from the period, but it also has new interviews with directors like David Fincher and Wes Anderson and Martin Scorsese talking about how important those interviews in that book are to them. And it really made me think about the way it is that filmmakers talk to other filmmakers. See, the thing with Truffaut, I mean, obviously, coming out of Cahiers du Cinema, but he was a filmmaker, and Hitchcock respected him as such. And there's something about their conversation, which is the conversation between professionals, between filmmakers, that somehow really gets under the skin of what it is that Hitchcock's doing. Some years ago, I programmed a Friedkin season at the BFI South Bank. And one of the things that we showed was a series of interviews that he'd done with Fritz Lang in the 1970s, black and white, 16 millimeter. It hadn't been edited at that point. It was just reels of interview. Were you more concerned with the, with the formal structure of a picture than... No. no. And it was really fascinating because Fritz Lang was very open and very intelligent, very insightful about his craft. But there was something about the way in which he talked to Friedkin, who at that point, of course, had directed The French Connection and The Exorcist. Somehow, Lang raised his game when it came to talking to Friedkin. It were fascinating interviews. I think your question, all your questions are, is there a strict formula how to make a picture? I don't think so. Some while ago, here in the blog, I talked about that film Side by Side, which was an investigation of the decline of celluloid and the rise of digital. And that was presented by Keanu Reeves. And one of the things that he did was he would go around and talk to filmmakers about the difference between celluloid and digital. And I know that Keanu Reeves is perhaps not known as the world's most, you know, insightful interviewer, but people spoke to him differently because they knew that he was a practitioner. They knew that he knew the difference between this stuff because he'd been on set, many of them, and actually worked with him. They were able to, to share their insights in a way that perhaps they wouldn't have done with somebody outside of the profession. I have a friend called Matt O'Casey who makes music documentaries for BBC Four, but he's a musician first and foremost. And I think that one of the reasons he gets really good interviews out of other musicians is that they realize that he can play. They realize that they're talking to a musician rather than a journalist. You know, there's been a lot of stuff written over the years about the relationship between film critics and film journalists. I've always thought that the two things are very, very different disciplines. As far as I'm concerned, I, I, I could never go anywhere near making a film. And I don't think it's the role of film critics to do that. And I don't think it's the role of filmmakers to necessarily engage in dialogue with film critics. I think that film criticism itself is valid as a way of talking about filmmaking. But maybe when it comes to talking to filmmakers, perhaps other filmmakers really do have the edge. If you think that you can hide what your interests are, what your, what your prurient interests are, what your noble interests are, what your fascinations are, if you think you can hide that in your work as a, as a film director, you're nuts. You know, and I think that he was one of the first guys who said, I'm gonna go with it. <laughs> I'm just gonna, I'm gonna be, I gotta be me.